recorded conversation number four. This is with Ryan Van Puderoin. The This one seemed like a, a more of a formal podcast setting. Uh, we, Doug and I went over to Ryan's house, and we sat in his bedroom on a couple of chairs, drank some coffees, and just chatted. Um, I was kind of weirded out at the beginning of th- how set up this was. Um, I, and, and it was a situation that we had never done before with these types of things. My whole idea in the beginning was just to kind of be an actual recorded conversation where it's very like cinema verite, where you're just sort of, the recorder is just sort of a fly on the wall to an actual situation, i.e., you know, us having coffee and we're recording it or which usually means we're in some sort of um, establishment where there's noise and whatever. So this is a quiet little bedroom and uh, bring kitchen chairs into the kit, into the bedroom and three dudes just sitting around a bed having a conversation, you know, not weird at all. (laughs) I'll just throw this like there. But um, yeah. So like, what's the premise? Like, so the whole idea. Um, I can't remember where I came up with the idea. I think I just wanted to do it because just um, because I was having like interesting conversations and just I listen to a lot of podcasts. That's good. I was gonna say if you're listening, like, are you guys a team then, kind of doing it? No, that was, I think, because I think we both, there was that one drunken night, and then I was like, we need to do it like this, because li- <laughs> listen to what we're talking, we need to record this. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Or maybe it was after Puddles, and then I texted you. After yeah, Puddles it was after party. Puddles, yeah. I'm like, we need to do this, and then just, like, hash out ideas. Yeah. That's wicked. But then it was also just about, <clears throat> like, just having more output. Doesn't matter what it is, like, you know just creating stuff. So it'd almost be like, this would be sort of like, uh, you have your garage bands and stuff and Mm -hmm. they just enjoy playing music. Yeah. They're not really going nowhere. So it's like, this is just like podcast garage band style. So it's like, I don't care if anybody listens to this. It's just, you know, it's it's fun to do. Right. yeah. Yeah. Because you really, you're just hanging out. Like, I wouldn't have called you and said, do you want to hang out? Yeah. Because it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like, we. Could, it's not what we do. But yeah. if you add the reason being like, we're making something, yeah. then it's like... Oh, dude, we'd still hang if you wanted to hang. It's like... <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's... No, that, the thing that I like about podcasts, like, when, like I love Joe Rogan's yeah. podcast. His is what I could... Yeah. And there's there's a few guys who have some really good ones out there, but ones that are extremely interesting, you know, and they they have great topics so they talk talk about cool things, you know. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. Yeah, I think it's like it's also too just a a reason to talk to interesting people. Yeah, yeah. It's like what did I talk about last night? Um, like I've been eating a lot of peanut butter. <clears throat> But I've been using celery, and it's oh, like yeah. celery is just the vehicle for me to have peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> the accomplice. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, no, this is good. I'm having celery. <laughs> so, like, this is just a vehicle that I could, you know, go talk to people I wouldn't necessarily talk to. Like, if I, like, CBC reporters or something, I'd yeah. be like, hey, come and hang out, but we're going to do this thing. Yeah. Right? I oh, don't know. It's cool. You know what? I think you'll get it to, to be a little more genuine. That way too, because um, well, a lot of podcasts podcasts now are are basically uh you know like TV shows. It's just the visuals not necessarily always there. Yeah. I guess the majority of them, some of them they do podcasts and you can see the video too, but yeah. the majority of them are just audio. But um, I don't know. I I think it's cooler to have a a more lack of a better word, almost amateurish approach to it in the sense that it's not polished. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not uh, scripted mm-hmm. or whatnot. It's like we're gonna talk about this, and this is what you have to say. And, you know. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I had a friend <clears throat> listen to the first one, I think, and he said it was like he was eavesdropping on someone's conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like Mike, it was Mike, you and I that went for brunch. Yeah. And we just said, we hit record and like, you could hear the server come up and we get our food and all this and you hear mm -hmm. the hustle of the, the room. And, uh, yeah, he was just like, it was like I was eavesdropping on people. And that's the way like, I feel like when I listen to Joe's too. It's like, yeah. you're just eavesdropping. Yeah. Joe's, Joe's is really cool. Like they have set, um, things that they're talking about, set guests or it'll be MMA or it'll be space or it'll be like weed you know like, like he talks about everything on yeah. the moon yeah. which is why i think his does so well yeah you know but um he's also a very smart guy and he has interesting topics like that's the thing too with with podcasts if you can keep it the conversation interesting you yeah. know it, 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 it leads to different uh, discussions, you know, it's like we might be here talking about celery and peanut butter, but, <laughs> you know, it could end up talking about a solar eclipse or shit that's going on in the world yeah. or whatever, right? But it's it's a matter of keeping people's interest. And it's, it's like the music industry. It's like writing music. Yeah. You know, it's like Devin Townsend Project. It's like, you don't know what you're going to It's like the Forrest Gump of, you know, <laughs> prog music because you don't know what... What he's gonna put out next, right? It's a yeah. box of chocolates, man. You know, it's like you just don't know, but that's what keeps people interested. They're like, "What's he gonna do now?" You know, it's yeah. like even even for us in the band, you know, we have no idea what we have to learn for the next tour. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, luckily, yeah. we keep a lot of the same set, you know, when we do in uh, a cycle. But uh, even even for this, songs are changing out again. You know, for oh this, for this the next, next run, US, you know, yeah going to be because that that one you can't do planet of the apes well well okay technically you're, cause you're, a lot of those are opening gigs it, right? half of them yeah they, they added so many headliners okay and i think we're actually doing more headliners than the actual dates we're doing with gojir and mm -hmm. opeth but for those headliner shows uh you know he's he's definitely nothing's confirmed apes still might be in but it might be taken out that's a, a tough song for a lot of the band to play, right? And, you know, <laughs> I love it. It's a challenge. So I always want to be challenged, right? So um, I look forward to that part of the set. And it's, it's fun to play too, right? But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, again, you don't know what you're going to get with him, right? He's going to be, oh, I don't like this or I wasn't vibing on it. So now we're going to do this song, you know? And it's yeah. always, uh, always interesting, right? But, but that must be hard to play that song every night. It gets easier if you're playing it every night. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. But you know, it, I'm I'm a I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I, I'm I'm already rehearsing for this next tour, and we haven't had, you know, a combined rehearsal because Deb's on vacation right now. Yeah, he gets back. Right. I guess next, is it next Friday? I think oh, wow. something like that. So like we're we're literally. He told me it was a couple days. He's like, I'll call you when I'm back. And I'm only gone for a couple of days. And then on Twitter, he's like, I'm gone for ten days. I I'm know. Like, All right. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't expect to call in a couple of days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he just took off on vacation. So when he gets back, it's literally gonna be five days before the tour starts. So yeah, rehearse, yeah. Yeah, we're looking at like three or four rehearsals probably. But you know what? We just finished two months in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we've had you know pretty much six weeks off but you know we didn't even get our gear shipped back from europe oh yeah until like a week ago oh wow so like i couldn't even practice because my pedals symbols like different things were just not there so mm -hmm. I, I finally got back on the kit today and i'm just playing a bunch of random songs because i'm like oh we could possibly play this we'll probably play all these transcendence tunes because we're supporting that record so yeah. you know yeah you just trying to keep your chops up and you know be ready for any surprise he throws your way <laughs> but yeah how does that work i thought you had like a separate kit for europe or yeah. Something. yeah i i have a full-on kit in europe and another full-on kit the exact same in uh north america but one thing that i haven't done is bought extra pedals oh uh for the european kit so it's and just I'm, the it's it's just the drums, the rack. It's pretty much everything, but with the without the pedals. Oh. And I, I have four single pedals because double bass. But I take both sets with me because if anything goes wrong, I have backups, right? Um, so yeah, that's the next thing I'm gonna work on is like getting 
uh, pedals for Europe just so I can leave them there. And then I'll never run into that problem again. And less to take yeah. overseas. That why you, that's why you keep the kid up there as well. Just so yeah. To... Yeah, it just solves a lot of problems, right? Because, um, yes, you're indoors. And when you're indoors, all these companies will say they'll have your specs of the kits you play. Gotcha. And then you can show up on tour and they'll have your kit waiting for you. But then, you know, you got to set it up the first day, go through all the stuff at the end of the tour, you got to send it back. So there's still money involved. Whereas if you just have a kit, it's ready to go. It's kept in storage with all the other stuff that's kept in storage for the past 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just makes it that much easier. And in the long run, it's saving costs. Oh yeah, you I guess know, so and the other guys deal with their gear as well. <clears throat> yep, yeah, we got A B rigs is what we call them. You know, A for North America and B and B rig in Europe, oh, wow. and they're pretty much all the same. Yeah. The only thing that really gets flown at this point is like um, pedals for me. You know, if I need to bring more sticks, uh, you know, for the lots of guitars though, because mm -hmm. they don't have A B guitars, so they're usually flying their guitars from. Okay. From North America to wherever we're playing, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for drums, it's been a huge help because the majority of our touring is Europe, UK, yeah. and, and uh, North America. So, you know, when I go to Australia, though... That's a long haul. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Holy and that's, that's always an interesting tour because with Australia, you have to fly to each show. There's no tour buses. Oh wow! Yeah, so you're oh flying. even like the Sydney to Melbourne like that, because that one's not that. Far. It's like a forty minute flight or something. It's not yeah. that far. You have to you have to um, fly. All of it's with flying. all so, your gear too. But no, here's here's the thing, with all the guitars and stuff, yes, but backline stuff like uh, heads, uh, cabinets, mm -hmm. drums, all that, all your endorsements hook you up per city. Oh, really? so, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it makes Australia, we always call it the tour of no sleep. Because yeah. once you're finished the show, you got to be up early for lobby call to fly to the next city. But because we've gotten bigger now, now we're taking a day off in between each show. Oh, so okay. we fly, you know, later in the morning, maybe nine or, you know, 10 or 11 in the morning, yeah. mm -hmm. get to the. Um, the city that we're going to play next and then we'll have a half day off there yeah, yeah. and uh it's not as bad but before how it went finish the show the show would be the next day get up at 6 a.m 5 a.m fly straight to the venue play same thing no sleep and when you oh. finish your show you're, you, you, like you're not sleeping to like two minimum oh, so yeah, you're yeah. running off three hours a night yeah wow yeah, because you can't, you get there and you set up and you sound check yeah. and then maybe you can nap, but they want meet and greet. Yeah. All, all this true. stuff's going like, yeah. it's just no sleep. Right. Yeah. And then but plus you do the drum lessons and like, I do the drum and lessons and I'm doing my, my motivational seminars. So it's like, I'm, I'm like extremely busy, but in a really good way. It's like, yeah. I love teaching lessons and the seminar things are, they're really starting to take off as well. Like Australia is going to be really cool because there's a, tons of people requesting it so mm -hmm. should be interesting what did you, you did it in europe right yep i did nine of them what did what is what happens well you go? Ba basically what what it is is like okay when i was growing up my family is super positive my dad and you know mom they're always like you can do whatever you want in your life you, you know you you should have a purpose you got to find out what you want to do mm -hmm. and when you you know what you want to do with your life, go for it. You got to believe in yourself. You got to, you got to bust your ass and work hard. You can't just dream. Yeah. Right. And so my parents, they always brought me up with things. I sit there and I go, Oh, I can't do that. My dad would be say, don't say that. Yeah. You know, you can do it. it. You might fail a couple times, but you can learn from that and you can move on. Don't say words like won't, can't. And, and he correct me all the time, but sooner or later I'd stop saying stuff like that. And as a result, I started succeeding in, in so many different areas of my life. And as I grew up, like through my 20s and stuff, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, apply all these principles, basically, uh, to my life. And, you know, I'd start getting session work, teaching. Next thing you know, Devin Townsend, who I don't know, is calling me 
saying, do you want to try out for my band? You know, and that was obviously my, my big break, right? But what these seminars are, are based around are have nine steps, basically. Like, these last for two and a half hours. It's a long, oh, wow. long thing. But people are engaged, you know, and, and it's like every single one of them I've done, I get awesome response from it and people are like really thankful for it, which is the reason and inspiration for me to keep on doing it and you know what it's free mm-hmm. I could charge and people said why aren't you charging for this it's like I'd pay for this you know how much people charge to do these things yeah. I go yeah but that's not the point I said yeah. I'm already here on tour I already got flown over through through the band and stuff I don't need to charge if, if the point here is I'm trying to help people, you know, live a life of, of their dreams or do what they want to do. I'm going to do it for free. You know, if it turns into a scenario where people are requesting me to go to Australia, but we're not touring there with the DTP, mm-hmm. of course, at that point, I'll charge so I can get a plane ticket over. Yeah. I have hotels and food, you know, that would be a completely <clears throat> different story. But even if I started doing that kind of thing, I would still do them for free if I'm out on the road with DTP. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's just a way of giving back. And a lot of this, because you're in a band, you know, you're already known and you have stature and whatnot in, in the public. Um, people want to come out to this. They want, they want to hear, oh, I wonder what he has to say, right? Yeah. 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 And so people are very intrigued by it. And um, I don't know. It, it basically the the seminars themselves are just I I've, I basically looked at my life and all the different successes I've had getting endorsements or um, you know playing all these massive shows uh, right down to even um, being in Modern Drummer magazine like just crazy shit I always dreamed about when I was a kid yeah and now it's it's all, it, it's all happened and coming true yeah. like some of my biggest dreams right and. Uh, I just found that there were nine steps, principles, whatever you want to call them, that I repeatedly did throughout my life that helped me get there. And that's what these are about. Okay. That's what the seminar is about. And I don't go and use examples of other people, like famous people, rock stars. This guy did this, and that's why he's there. You know, yeah. it's like... You just talk about what you did. All, my, all the examples are me. All the times I failed. Yeah. And, and how I had to learn from those lessons. Uh, all the things I did right... And examples of what I did in my life to get there. Yeah. And, you know, it's like I'll use like certain inspiration uh, would come from movies or quotes or whatever. And, of course, I'm going to use that because that was what inspired me to follow that or do that thing at that particular time. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'll use stuff like that. But the basis of it is about me and, and my experiences, <laughs> which I think people are going to attach to a lot more. Mm-hmm than if you're just telling a whole bunch of uh, stories about other people that has nothing to do with you just to use as an example. Yeah. yeah. Anyone can go and do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, well, and they're here to hear your story and yeah. your journey and, you know, where did you begin or where did you start and then where you're at yeah. and how did you get there. And, exactly. You know. And um, like, like I said, you know, it's like I don't go in. Another thing, too, with these seminars is I don't go in with the script. I don't go in, you know, having my iPhone in my hand and or, or a piece of paper and hand it out. Go, okay, so this is what we're going to go through. It's me, a chair, and these people in front of me, and it's all up here, all up in my head, you know. Makes and, it more authentic. Well, exactly, but mm-hmm. more more importantly, it's genuine. It's the truth. Yeah. I'm yeah. I am not scripted, and you know what? If you were to record five of them in a row, they would all sound different from each other. Mm-hmm. All the points would be the same, and I bring up the same topics but even my delivery I find gets better mm-hmm. you know as I do it so it's a learning experience for me too oh. and you know it's like I never went to Toastmasters I'm not like a yeah uh you know a great speaker or anything like that you know it's like I'm, I'm good handle on the English language and I can get through to people mm-hmm. but I think what it is is people see it that it's, it's genuine it's heartfelt and I mean it and if I'm gonna take two hours two and a half hours out of my day to tell you these are the things that I did repeatedly, give it a shot, and maybe you'll be really blown away what you can achieve in your life. If I do stuff like that, I think people are going to really pay attention to it. You know, they're going to take something away from, from that, and that's what's been happening. Yeah. I've gotten so many uh, like messages 
for, uh, I was actually talking today, first time I did it, I was talking today with, I'm jumping all over the place, uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. but uh, my uh, drum student, I did a Skype lesson with him and he's in Australia, and the first time I ever tried out this motivational stuff was in 2015. <clears throat> with uh, your drum during students, a drum, right? yeah. drum clinic tour that I did in Australia. So I started doing these motivational speeches and what I did is I tagged it on at the end and they took off. Like everyone, it was funny, I'm doing a drum clinic mm -hmm. and the only thing everyone talked about afterwards was the motivational speech at the end. <laughs> oh, wow, eh? And it was a condensed version of the two and a half hour thing I'm doing now Yeah, yeah. into like 20 minutes, half an hour. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. very condensed but I said this is what I do blah 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 you know and it took off mm -hmm. right so anyways my Skype student um, his name's Steph he was there and he was blown away with it I, I taught him a couple times this and that and uh, we've been talking you know just through Facebook and stuff and he's like yeah, I, you know I really want to do what you're doing but I also want to get ahead and just do music for a living which like I know we should teach and I said look I got a student of mine who I taught in Vancouver. Uh, she's actually from France, but she came to live in Canada for a year. She started drumming, and I was her first drum teacher. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she was getting lessons through me, and then she moved back to France. Her next place was Australia. I said, look, I'm still in touch with her. She told me she's going to Australia. She's just going home to France for a few months, and then she's coming your way. And she's going to be in Sydney, where he's from. And I said, look. I will tell her that you're going to teach her. Let's do a couple Skypes. I'll, I'll explain to you how I teach students mm -hmm. and do all this. And then and this was a guy that you taught. Yeah. Just taught drum lessons. I just wanted to help him out. Mm -hmm. So, but he got to a point where he could actually return it and like teach other people. And that, well, that's what I'm getting at. All right. right? Okay. Is, is like, I said, she's coming. So get ready. And he's like, holy crap. And so I, I talked to him and I said, these are the things you need to do to establish yourself in Sydney. If you want to get known as a teacher, if you want to get more known for your drumming and have a shot at a bigger band or whatever, you got to do these things. So I started laying out all these steps mm -hmm. and principles. And he's like, he realized these are the same things I was talking about at the drum clinic, mm -hmm. which he saw me at. And I said, just start putting the legs everywhere. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Open up all these different doors. You you heard a part of what the... I, I In the Vancouver Clinic when you did the Devin Townsend Project. Uh, yeah. Transcending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. we did that... Uh, Special. At Long McQuaid there. That's right. You taught the class. That there. was kind of what I did in Australia. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And anyways, Steph started applying all these different things. Got a website together, this, that. Finally, students there, I said, start teaching her. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. It's your first student. Start like this and build it up. You're going to develop your own style. Don't be me. You know, yeah. and that's what I say is be a first-rate version of yourself, not a second-rate version of someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, just start this way. Show them the basics, technique, you know, all the important things. Get them on stick control, the best book in the world for drumming, and, you know, all this stuff. He started doing it. He got his confidence after a few months. I'm like go to school. He's like, what? I said, not to go to school, <laughs> go teach at a school. Mm -hmm. Do you have a couple students on our private? I said, just trust me. Everything that you've done is you building your foundation. Yeah. You're a great guy. You're, you're personable. People like you. It'll be easy. And you're a great drummer. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you can do this, right? So anyways, fast forward, he's been doing this now for a while. Uh, we, we talked today mm -hmm. and he's like, I'm like the top teacher in the school. Wow. I've, I've, I talk to all the parents. I'm getting raving reviews. They want me to go full time there. And, and it's like all this. And other bands in town are noticing Steph mm -hmm. because of his teaching. He's playing more. Mm -hmm. And he said, I told him, I said, from doing this, you're going to become a better drummer. What did he say to me today? He's like, <laughs> man, just teaching. I realize things about my own thing. It makes me want to work on my game more. I go, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right? So... Here's this guy who didn't even have any thought of being a teacher, didn't even really think maybe it wasn't within his realm. Yeah. And now he's turning into a popular teacher in Sydney, which is a big city and yeah. getting tons of students asked to do it full time, but he has a full time job and 
eventually he's going to have to make that choice because you know what? He can make a shitload more money teaching drums, mm -hmm. you know, at 50 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, whatever it's going to be, yeah. versus his $25 an hour a day job. If he has five, eight hour days of teaching drums, he's mm -hmm. going to kill what he's making at his day job. Oh, yeah. You know, so that could happen anytime. And he's even reaching that point, right? But that's, that's what the cool thing is, is he took all these things. He's followed me for a long time. He's been a fan of my drumming and DTP for a long time. Mm -hmm. He applied them. And he's just sitting there, he's like, I, fucking unbelievable, man. He goes, it worked. Yeah. Everything you told me, it fucking worked. And I'm like, I told you it would. Yeah. But here's the big thing is, you know, before he could even thank me or whatever, I said, whatever you do, don't thank me. And he's, and he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you don't thank me for that because I gave you a nudge in the right direction. I gave you some, some pointers or whatever. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is, Every one of us dreams. Yeah. Every one of us sets goals and say we're going to do this, this, that. You know what a lot of people fail at doing is working hard. Is busting their ass and actually following through and taking action. And, and implementing all exactly. the Exactly. Everything, right? That's exactly right. Steph implemented everything that I, I mentioned and more. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he's successful. And he just said, it's easy. It's just like... <laughs> He goes, honestly, he goes, I can't believe how easy this was, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and I said, yeah, but that's why you don't thank me is because you did all the work. I didn't do shit for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't show up to one lesson and take over and tell you to do it. You did it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I gave you some, some info and some advice and some helpful pointers since I've been teaching 20 years. It's like, I got a pretty good curriculum set up for all my students, yeah, yeah. you know? And I just gave them a basis and I said, start your own, yeah. you know, but in, in like the whole realm of things here and speaking about that, that's why I do this stuff mm -hmm. is because that's super gratifying for me. And you know what? I, I feel good that I help someone else do something that they love. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times I think this world, if you want to get into deeper talk here, it's like, <laughs> it's less and less of that, man. And there's more war. There's more hatred. No one helping each other. Everybody's starting to close themselves in yeah and they're yeah. they just they don't want to let anybody in or nothing like that they just you know kind of head down and i'm on my way don't bother me don't that's bother exactly me. it you know it's we're back in the day you could you know go up to anybody and spark up a conversation and it was it was a very genuine conversation it was a comfortable conversation there mm -hmm. wasn't like any thought like you know is this guy gonna ask for something or you know what i mean like yeah now it's like if you start a conversation automatically look at you like okay now what do you want yeah. what do you want from me what are you building up to ask Pe for? people are assuming already that you want something from them yeah you know yeah. it's you know it, it'd be you know what a lot of times i'll put every time these are free people will message me when they say the first five people to pm me are going to get into this and and we'll make it happen because I've just been doing it at venues, right? So yeah. I can't bring in twenty or thirty people, so I yeah, have to right. limit it for security <clears throat> reasons. Yeah, people yeah. will message me, based off what you just said. Mm -hmm. People will message me and they'll go, "How much is it?" <laughs> <laughs> I am not shitting you, man. <laughs> not everyone, not everyone. <laughs> but there have been people who message me and they say that it's like, yeah. "Did you even read like the headlines?" Yeah. It's yeah. free, <laughs> you know, but. Instantly, this is what's happening. Our, our people will get out there and they'll see something on social media. Or they'll see something on TV. Mm -hmm. And they will they won't say free. They won't say that they have to pay for it. But they'll make it look like it's free. Make, yeah, or something right. like that. Yeah. And then at the end, yeah. there's the, the there's pitch. The catch. Yeah. There's the pitch, you know. And people are dragged in at that point. Maybe they've invested, you know... 20 minutes watching an infomercial on TV and they're like, ah, oh, fuck, we might as well do it. You know, it's like, that's right. But, uh, the, I, I, I still get the feeling and this is an interesting topic in itself that when I do these people are just waiting for a catch it then. I've had people say, I thought there's going to be a catch it then. Yeah. I thought you're going to try and sell me something, you know? And, and, the, and they said it was just like, it wasn't through the delivery of my seminar that they thought that. Because they said that was very genuine, but you just, it's very unheard of to get things for free these days. Yeah. 
So when I'm like, hey, thanks for coming. Have a great night. And, and that's it. People are dumbfounded sometimes. They're like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. he's not going to try and sell us. Or, you know, or it's like, hey, buy this new book that I'm promoting yeah. now or something at the end. You know? The only thing, you know what? The only thing that I ask for at the end of every seminar is this. I'll say, if you truly and genuinely enjoyed what I had to say and you're inspired and you're motivated by it and you're going to apply those principles and you're going to, you know, do everything I said and give it a shot for yourself because it works for me and I still do it all the time, then the only thing that I ask for you is just tell other people about it. Mm -hmm. Tell other people that, hey, that was fucking awesome and if he does it, go. Yeah. Because, you know, like this one guy put it to me, uh, he, he shared a post on his page and he's like, you get a chance, go to this. It's amazing. This is free. You'd be crazy not to take advantage of this. And blah, blah, blah. It went off and just pumped it up. And he yeah. says, who knows how, how much longer you'll be able to see this guy for free. And, you know, that rose in, rose in interesting uh, subject to me because I'm just like, yeah, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I'm not on tour and someone in England or Australia or Japan wants me to do a big seminar with yeah. you know 500 people or 100 people 50 people whatever mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to charge you know so it does bring up that kind of interesting scenario down the road but hey yeah. man it, when it gets to that it's just like i said when i was doing music when i was 16 i said when i look up and i can see that the the lights and the light rafters and all that above the stage are like 50 feet above my head I know I'm fucking made. <laughs> you know, and I know that there's not a fucking single can three feet from my head and I feel like a McDonald's cheeseburger, you know? It's yeah. like, yeah. you know, like, I'll know it, right? And I'll, I'll never forget when that happened, right? And I remember looking up, we played a big show at the Devon Townsend Band yeah. 15 yeah. years ago in Atlanta, Georgia at Prague Power. Oh, wow. And we are kind of in the middle of the bill and I remember looking up and I'm like, yeah. I did it. Was it always at that same venue? I can't remember yeah. what it's called. Yeah, it's called uh, Center Stage. Right. Yeah, in Atlanta, Georgia. And then, you know, just this year, as you know, you're there, we uh, headlined it. So, yeah. you know, coming full circle coming in full a sense, circle, right? Yeah, that's but pretty cool. Yeah. Going back to the seminar thing, you know, when I make that first flight to wherever that destination is, and it is solely for that purpose, I'm going to have that same reaction. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, and, and that, that's, that's kind of like another goal in my life. It's like, it's something that I'm, that I, I truly love. And it's like, I don't know, like I said, I think we need more of, uh, people helping each other in this world because it's getting less and less, man. Yeah. 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 Some crazy shit going on. You know, it's like my wife gets freaked out every time I go on the road because I was just in Stockholm, some fucking nut job drives a bus through a bunch of people and like... Oh, right. Yeah, I heard about yeah. that. Played, you guys were still over there. No, we're, we're home. We're home. That was just oh. like a week, that, There was something ago. that happened and you just left. <clears throat> oh, that's right. It Wasn't it Paris? No, not Paris. No, there was something. Germany or something like that. And it was like a week after you were there. Mm -hmm. That's right. It was about a week after. But... Um, I can't remember what it was though. You know, we played Labataclan. Yeah. Like that was a, that was our, what gig was that? Like our third show. Yeah, that was and right at the beginning. That was like, it was trippy, man. Like to be there was, it was, was a it? pretty emotional show. The, in the Paris, Paris attack, yeah. 2015. Oh, where Eagles yeah. of Death Metal were playing. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. they shot it up. So that was like the third show. And that was the, like, um, when people were talking about uh, doing the, the video thing on tour in Europe. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing I wanted to do was to go to mm -hmm. that place and just yeah. to, to be there. Like, I don't know. I get it. It's a weird fascination. I find with when some shit went down at a place. Yeah. Like I remember my first time in Columbus, I had, I met somebody and I made them take me to where Don Mag was shot. Yeah. And there was a reggae band playing. Yeah. And we went in and there was all these people getting high and it looked like it was just, it was so weird. And they say they don't really do metal bands no more. They just do all this reggae stuff after what happened. Yeah. So then they have a, a door at the back where the guy came in, and it's a whole big tribute to Dimebag. Wow. So, but wow. it was just like, I just wanted to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, it's... it's I, I get that. Like, when I was at the Bataclan, when I was up on stage, I was just like... 
there were a couple times where, you know, songs I don't need to concentrate much on for the parts, you know, just like easier ones. I was just sitting there going, fuck. Being in that drum seat of the drummer from Eagles of Death Metal, it's like, what the fuck? Like, what would you do? Like, everyone yeah. reacts differently. Yeah. So, yeah. how would you clue into that? You know, it's like, fuck. Like, or, or how would you react to it, not clue into it, but just like... Mm -hmm. When shit goes down, it's... Yeah, you don't know. You put yourself in, in those shoes, man. And when I was up on stage, it just... My heart went out to all those people, families and shit who had to deal with that. It was just like... It was, it was a really emotional show. It was a great show. Like, the, the positive energy was incredible, mm -hmm. man. It yeah. was. Because I think it was just... It, they just reopened it, like, a few weeks or... Well, months before. no, I think they... Because I think they had Sting. Sting they had the Sting as the first guy, and then there were, I think we were the third act or something okay. to play there since. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's fucking crazy, man. It was... It was a pretty intense time, you know, but, uh... Again, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, you spread positive energy it turned into a great night it was sold out mm -hmm. and uh it was a really good crowd and even afterwards you know when we were done walking walking out to the bus after and all that there's tons of people who stuck around and you, you know what i was out there for a good should have must have been out there for an hour or so mm -hmm. just talking with all the different people and how grateful they were that we played there and you know it's it's really cool experience that's cool yeah and that's like kind of it's not like that in europe as much like you don't get like you're a meet and greets there's less people yep because i think that's the way culture less. is like they don't need to really meet you to enjoy whereas there's yep. the whole celebrity thing in the u.s and i think that's why you get so many like the chicago thing that oh, happened Jesus. where there was like a hundred people at the meet yeah it was <laughs> oh, oh, it was dude, insane it was, in, it was insane. yeah but you don't really get that in, in Europe and like we were talking to Mike and he's like, you know, yeah. there'd be like 10, mm -hmm. 20 people at the most. Yep. And yeah, it's, it, it is, it's, I, I find that's really interesting is the different cultures, you know, and Europeans are distinctly different from English people, mm -hmm. you know, in, in England and then they're different even from Irish and you know then you come over to North America and that's a whole different ball game oh, well, yeah. you know it's it's just like it's it's really interesting when you travel all around the world how the different um, cultures and societies and all these different countries that you go to just you, you can tell where you are after you've done it a while mm -hmm. just just by the, the mannerisms of the the people there right and it's all very similar, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's like you, you begin to recognize it. But, uh, yeah, places like the States, they stick out. Like you said, the VIPs, it's like... Yeah. They're packed and tons of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get the starstruck people, you get the sweaty palm people, like, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you get all those different types. And yeah. it's funny in Europe, even when you go from country to country and whatever, and you know, Germans and, and Dutch people can be very different compared to like, you know, people in France, you know, yeah. you can tell it's a difference, right? But one thing that I find they all have in common is they're just like, yeah, you're another person. Cool. At the meet and greets, yeah. you know, I actually, I so like I that. It's not that I dislike what happens in, in North America, because that's cool too, because when you're a kid, you kind of almost dream about like oh it'd be so cool signing autographs and you know yeah. people wanting to meet you and yeah, yeah. you know now nah, I don't think like that at all that was my vision as a kid and yeah. here I am doing it mm -hmm. and then you go to somewhere like Europe and you're like oh you know they're, they're not like they're, they're not like yeah you know oh my god you know it's they're just like hey it's cool to meet you I just want to say you know I like, dig your music yeah. blah 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 and I'm like cool <laughs> you know yeah. It's yeah. now have a coffee then. <laughs> it's yeah. like they're really. It's a different vibe, right? Unless you're a soccer player, then probably. It's well, because then everyone. That's the thing. <laughs> See, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, you you do that in sports figures in, in North America are obviously really big too. But, yeah, that that would be I guess more of a European thing. You know, it's like. Obviously, you're gonna have people who you, you meet starstruck people too in in there, but it's it's exactly like you're saying them. It's more, 
more relaxed there. Yeah. And that's a result of uh, there being less people at these VIPs. Yeah. The thing that I found, like, when uh, when I was on tour with you guys, it was, like, it really... Because I remember in my early 20s or even, yeah, around there, I always used to hang out at the bus and get the autographs and stuff like that. Yeah. Until a certain point where I was just, like... I had a shoebox full of set lists that were signed. I'm like, what am I going to do? It's just paper with pen on it. Just something clicked. And I'm like, oh, this is dumb and pointless. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know. And you but, know then, uh, but then going on tour with you guys and then seeing that other side of it, and it is kind of taxing to give yourself to that many people. Yes. Like to have that many people's like energies forced upon you. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, you know, for a guy like Devin, who is the band's named after him, it is his band after all you know he's the one who takes the brunt of it you know it's like now that we've been playing with him for for a long time yeah it's it's definitely getting more popular for us as well mm -hmm. but yeah Devin's just like bombarded right after mm -hmm. all you know it's like he's the guy who started the the band the music you yeah. know so we wouldn't be there without him writing it all yeah. so you know um I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm standing beside him half the time when it's happening. You know, yeah. like these VIPs or, you know, we go walk to the gym, you know, try and find a gym or whatever. And, or sometimes we'd set up outside of, because uh, it was still warm, it was September, you know, we'd set up uh, in the trailer there. Yeah. And you, know, you joined out, us on a couple. Lifting the weight in, in the trailer. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, fans kind of catch out. Okay. You know, they, oh, well, shit, you know, and they'll mosey their way over to it and, it can be very intrusive sometimes, right? But, mm. but the way that I look at that as well is the same as having a camera stuck in your face all the time is intrusive. It is, yeah. <laughs> but but then I was able to edit off stuff. But that was a edit, job. Edit, edit things out to be like, oh, this is too much. I'm, I can't show that. That's a too yeah, personal yeah. or or whatever. Maybe the band doesn't want to, you know, show that side of could be a new song or whatever you know but um you know the the thing too that i realize and this is just speaking for myself not for all the guys but i would never in a million years complain about that myself personally and it's like have i complained about it i'd, I'd be a liar if i said i never complain about it because sometimes you're sick you're running off two hours sleep and you're just like oh man i wish i could have to deal with this right now because I'm exhausted or whatever. But the bottom line, all those people, it doesn't matter if it's a guy bothering you at dinner, you know, can I get an autograph? Sorry. You know, or if it's a guy interrupting their workout or if it's just meet and greets or whatever, the bottom line is Devin and us, we can write that music all day long without those people. We're fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. The only way that we're touring around the world isn't because of the music we write and shit. Yes, I know we have to write it for people who like it, but the bottom line is the people have to buy it. Mm -hmm. The people have to come to the shows. They have to buy your merch. Yeah. Yeah. They have to buy the VIP tickets. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's the main reason why we're there. And that's why I will always give as much time as I possibly can to the people who actually want to meet you. you yeah. know. And I've had experiences too where I... I I remember being 16, 15, coming to Vancouver, seeing shows, waiting at the Four Seasons downtown for because a lot of the bands stayed yeah, there. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to shit on any bands, you know, but uh, there were a couple bands I met where you could see them in the, the tour bus and you're waiting there for two hours, Yeah. you yeah. know, and they know you're out there. The TM comes out or someone's going into the bus. And there's this one band in particular and a very famous guitar player and I was just like, oh, just want his autograph of the whole band, but it'd be so cool to shake his hand. And we saw him in the fucking bus. No, no, we, we checked the bus. He's not in there. He's in the hotel. <laughs> just like fucking... He's right saw, there. Yeah. <laughs> we saw him. He's like, no, no, it's someone who looks like him is probably his tech. And, he, and we're just like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah. You know, and I, I, I made a vow that day. I said... In my exact words here, it's like, when I get to that stage and I'm a fucking rock star, you know, yeah. that's what I called it back then. Now it's a professional musician. <laughs> but, um, uh, I was like, I will fucking never do that. Yeah. I promise. And here, here I am years later touring the world. You have people wanting autographs and stuff. And I stay true to it. Yeah. It's like, 
there have been times where, yeah, you know what, uh, you were sick or, you know, you had to do an interview or whatever. Yeah. Shit happens, man. Yeah. You know, and you're not able to get to everyone. But, you know, I, I always do my due diligence and give it back. You know? And that's part of the thing I think is so taxing is you have to put all that energy into it to yeah. make yourself so available. Mm-hmm. Cause then if you're, you, you could just go hide you and, could. Then not, and avoid all that and not have to deal with all that pressure or give yourself to those but, people. But you know, in order to do it, it does take a bit from yourself, but it is, it pays dividends for that person just for that moment of time with you. Well, you're giving back to people who are making it possible for you to even be there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I also find taxing and I think it is taxing because I've seen a ton and I know a ton of bands now who I'm friends with who avoid people. Again, not mentioning any names or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? It's taxing and uh, it, it consumes energy not doing it too. Because you know what it does? It plays with their head. Yeah. And, By and, not doing it? Yeah, well, yeah, because they're like, fuck, I should be out there doing it oh no, I, I don't want to do it, you know, but then they yeah. beat themselves up because they're not gonna, mm, yeah. going out there and doing it, you know, and there's people who really want to meet you and what, and you know, there's some people, I'd say the majority of it, like I think DTP is a, a really good example of a band that will go out there and sign everything, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, we understand that we always make it a point of letting people know that, hey, we're extremely grateful. Yeah that you know we're here being able to do this because we can't do it without you guys and you know sounds really cliche but it's absolute truth it's not cliche at all yeah yeah you know but um yeah i, I think it can be taxing energy wise too if uh, you're avoiding it because there's this guilt factor yeah I've, I've had guilt factor where i've had had to go to interviews or i was just so sick from catching a cold or whatever and it's pissing rain and yeah, they've been waiting out there, but man, I need to perform another show tomorrow. Yeah, I need all the energy I can get. Yeah, you know, and, and so you go straight to your bunk to bed, but, mm -hmm. you know, and then you, you sit there and you go, oh, fuck, I should, and then you're just like, you have another thousand or two thousand people to perform for and you got to be on par tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so there's always balance. That's what it is, man. It's balance. I think that just goes in life in general. Yeah. Oh, fuck, have some kids. You'll learn balance <laughs> right, right a fucking right. way, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You find, though, that uh, now that you are where you're at now, do you still get nervous when you meet certain people like that you had looked up to, you know, when you were, young, when you were younger and playing music and stuff like that? And then down the road when you meet them, do you find yourself almost feeling like the fan still? Or does that... Because you've met now so many... Yeah, people. um... Okay, I'll, I'll tell you some, some examples and some stories. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I will always be a fan of music, just in general. Yeah. So, like, that means if I'm a fan of music, I'm going to be a fan of the people who make that music. Yeah. So that part of me, will, I'll, I'll, if I can meet every band that I ever loved, mm -hmm. that will never go away. No matter how many times I've met people and I've gotten used to that feeling... It will never go away being going, holy shit. You know, it's like, I haven't met Paul McCartney, but if I met Paul McCartney, he'd be like, fuck. Yeah. God damn, man. You are amazing. And Beatles are one of my favorite bands of all time. And some of the music that that guy's written has inspired the shit out of me. You know? And, uh, yeah, you know? But within the same breath, I know what it's like for these mega... It don't even have to be a mega star. You know, you could just be someone who's famous. And they're another normal person, man. Yeah. And you know what? If you treat yeah. them as like, hey, man, it's really cool to meet you. I, I yeah. love what you do. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to like, oh, fuck, I'm shaking. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. that sometimes can freak people out. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they're just like, oh. Because they don't know how to respond. They don't know how to respond yeah. or react to it. Yeah. But it, I think if you just treat each other with respect, mm -hmm. you are yourself, just like you'd be talking to your best buddy. Mm -hmm. and you go up there and, and you're just like hey Paul loved your music man and you know just a huge fan it's really cool to meet you you know yeah. and thanks for it for all the music you've written over the years if you approach him like that I think he's gonna have a lot easier time going man thanks really appreciate it you know whatever and wherever the conversation goes it goes from there yeah but um 
you know, now for examples, like, uh, I was a big Meshuggah fan, started listening to him in like 94. Yep. Got into him then. And, uh, I even remember I wasn't even with Devin at that point. I didn't get the Devin gig until 2003. So I'd been listening to Sugar, you know, got to see him the first time, like in 2000 or something. And it's just like, fuck, this band's awesome, you know? And it's like, that was like when they were opening, I think still. Yeah. They're still, yeah. Like chaos fear and stuff like that. They were headlining, I think back then, but definitely not as big as they are now. But, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, always thought, oh, it'd be so cool to like, you know, meet Thomas Hawk and it's like, oh, fuck. Just like, you know, get a lesson from her, ask him a couple of jumping questions, you know. Mm-hmm. Fast forward many years, you know, we're on tour with Devin Townsend Project and here we are doing shows with him. And, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I'll never forget, you know, like meeting him the first time. He's a really funny dude and we're just hanging out and, and I'm like, hey, man. He's like, hey, man, what's up, you know, and it was just that chill thing and then we started talking and he always he, he always said fuck like the most positive dude I've met man <laughs> you know and, yeah, yeah. and, and he'd, he'd always kind of make fun and, and just have jokes with it and we'd laugh and you know and then I'm sitting here and time goes by you do a couple tours or or shows with them and we did the big Brixton Academy show with them with co-headline oh, right. yeah. oh, stuff yeah. like that and it just hit me this one day where I was sitting there and I was going through my phone. I don't know if you guys do this, but, you know, you're going through your phone and it's, oh, fuck, I'm not in contact with that person anymore. Or, you know, it's like, oh, that number's not even there anymore. So I'm yeah. just going through it. And then it's going through the H's and, and I looked and it's like Thomas Hack, right? I'm just like, and it just hit me. It's just like, wow, <laughs> holy fuck, you know? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, when, I, when I was like, when I was like, you know, back in 1994, you know, 20 years ago, yeah. you know, it's like listening to these guys and now like he's a friend, he's yeah. a buddy. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and I, I can bizarre. literally pick it up and I can call him if I want. Say, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. yeah you know, hey, man, hey you know, when I made the switch from Pearl Drums to Sonar? Mm hmm. Fucking first guy I emailed was Thomas Hop, because he's a sonar artist. Oh, okay. And he yeah, said, yeah. "Look, man, I'm, I'm thinking of moving, and there's only one company that I want to move to." Yeah. yeah. And he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck." He goes, "Well, what are you thinking?" You know. And we had emails back and forth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even when I was doing that, I'm like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> here's here's, here's Thomas to say, <laughs> "Yeah, come on board, man. It'll be awesome." Here's, here's what they can do for you, you know, this is how good they've been to me, these drums are wicked, try these ones, you know, you're getting all this advice, but it's just, like I said, it's another, another example of it coming full circle, right? Yeah. There's that one time, then you meet them, but I was cool, I was chill, you know, yeah, it's yeah. just like very cool to meet you, you're badass, I love your drumming, dude. Yeah. And uh, next thing you know, you're friends, and now... Now every time I see him, it just ends up being a good old piss fest because yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, always beer. There's always beer around when we hit hit Sweden. If anything, with the tour bus, it's like when Stockholm. We were yeah. telling our tour manager Eddie, he's like, "When Stockholm?" And he's like, "Why?" I said, "Meshuggah is going to be there." Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> and we need some oh, beers. Yeah, yeah, I saw the pictures of that one. Oh, that yeah. was another one. I was like, "Damn it!" Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was fucking. I got a funny story. I was uh, we were playing. Or said, and you know, Devin would come on and do E-Ah. Yeah. Uh, acoustically. Well, he'd come on and do e And uh, that gives us like three, four minutes because he just sings it to That's the right. crowd yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, we would go off stage and our tour manager, Eddie, would just, uh, he'd get our drinks together. He'd make beef, a, a vodka orange, me a gin and tonic. Oh, or, he was or, he was actually doing cocktails then. Oh yeah, and so we get off North stage. American, he was do, he'd bring out a bucket of ice and yep. have beers in for everybody. Okay. While yeah. while Dev was doing. We 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 got upgraded to cocktails. <laughs> so <All> fancy. <laughs> so yeah, he'd tell us and fucking Eddie's just incredible. By the way, this guy's like the TM of all TMs. He's so mm-hmm. fucking good. Paul Collis, another guy, has been super amazing for us over the years, but. Eddie was doing this one and uh, yeah, you know, we are sitting there and we make these cocktails and so this gig we were playing, uh, fuck, what's it called? Berg. Uh, I can't remember. It starts with a B though. In, in Stockholm? In Stockholm. Yeah. 
great game. Like, really fancy looking, big place, yeah. 2,000, 2,500 people or whatever. And anyways, uh, EO starts to grab my drink. And when I was drumming the show in the VIP section, which is the left-hand balcony when I'm looking out at the crowd, uh, was all of the guests that yeah. night. And I could see Thomas up there, you know, like, <laughs> watching me play. And his girlfriend is uh, Jessica Pimentel from... Um, Orange is the New Black. Right. She, she's one of the oh, actresses okay. yeah. on that. Such a sweetheart. She, like, they're the best couple in the world. They're just so awesome, right? But they were both there. She was out in Sweden oh, cool. with him, right? Because they're together quite a bit. And so I was mm-hmm. like, fuck it. So I walk up there. I hadn't seen them yet because they came in just as we started playing. Because mm-hmm. they were a little bit late. And uh, <coughs> Deb singing the... Uh, Sit there with my drink, and I'm just kind of purposely like stand, and you're up in stand. The, you're up I'm, in, I'm the, in the audience now, yeah. but in the VIP because yeah. no one's gonna bother. This was me in there. the balcony. This is on the balcony, yeah. and you know, <laughs> Dev singing and playing, and it's kind of like the bowling thing when Dev was doing EL. We went bowling in yeah. Vegas. Remember, you taped all that. Yeah. Um, kind of the same thing, but this yeah. time I just went up on my own and like sitting there and having a drink and look at you know Thomas is there. He's just watching. Like, and then he kind of sees that this guy just keeps looking and he's kind of getting closer and so he's like, what the fuck? He looks over he's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Big hugs, we're all, hey, what's up? You know, I brought a couple beer with me because I need new beer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, and again, just one of those moments where you're just like, yeah, this is really cool, man. But the, the moral of the story, man, is just people, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just normal people. They happen to play music <clears throat> that you love. Yeah. You know? and uh, It's still so weird, though. It is, you know? And it's like when, when I do <coughs> meet, you know, uh, newer guys and stuff like we're doing download this year and we're on right before Rob Zombie, there's probably a good chance. Like, I, I love the early White Zombie stuff and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like some of Rob's music, too. And, you know, there's a good chance I'll see him, you know, yeah. or roaming around backstage or something and if I got to meet him it'd be like hey man it's nice to meet you dude you know or whatever and, and who knows I don't know if he's an approachable dude or not and you got to know your boundaries I would never go out of them but if we were walking crossing paths on the way to the stage or something I'd say hi you know yeah. but yeah. I just treat him like another dude you know it's just like I think the weirdness comes in the hindsight though because there was that gig, yeah. there was that thing um, I got to work with Bob Rock for like a week or so or oh, something yeah. or, or whatever and did a photo that was the first time I met him too yeah and I remember going in and being like I don't know what it, I was just like this is I wasn't nervous or nothing I was just like this is really weird like it doesn't make any sense because yep. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's Bob Rock yeah and then I walk into the room I'm like well alright there he is Here and then go. every and then like, we all got introduced and everything like that but yeah and then by the end of it it was like I had to, his people wanted me to do a photo shoot for him. And at some point, it was like we had to talk on the phone and we had to call each other. And he was in, he lives in Maui, Hawaii. Maui or yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then, like, I'd, I'd be talking to Bob and then I get off the phone. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Right? <laughs> it's like, I was, Bob Rock's phoning me. He's like, no. Right? <laughs> it's I know. weird. But then when you're talking to him, it's like, oh, yeah, it's all business and yeah. whatever and yeah. cash and stuff. But yeah. like, ah. <clears throat> that's like, it, it's true. It's like, so I know that was drawn out, but that's the cool thing about podcasts. You just tell stories and you talk and mm-hmm. you do your thing. But that's how I feel about that thing. You know, going back to, to the question you asked and Zim just gave you a great example as well. It's just like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, I'll always be a fan. So yes, mm-hmm. you know, you'll sit there and you will go, wow, this is crazy. You know, it's yeah. like, I've always wanted to meet this guy, you know, mm-hmm. like probably the, biggest star I could meet would be uh, Paul McCartney, you know? Yeah. And it'd be very cool to meet him one day, you know, and just shake his hand, just have a minute with him just to say, man, love what your music has done for the world. You've yeah. influenced yeah. fucking almost everyone. Oh, you know, exactly. it's like, yeah. and uh, just to be able to say that and get a smile out of him or a thank you, it'd be just fucking awesome right mm-hmm. so the fanboy would be there for sure but i'd just treat him like another guy you know yeah. and and uh that'd be really cool another big 
big star I'd love to meet is uh, Neil Peart. You know, it's like yeah. he's yeah. he's my first massive drum influence and probably my biggest. If you were to listen to my drumming, you could probably pick out more Neil Peart than any other influence I had. Yeah, but the newer <coughs> or old? Oh, old. Yeah, because yeah. no. there was that thing you remember where I can't remember it was in the documentary or something mm-hmm. where someone came in and t- taught him how to play more with feel and more with flow mm. or something. Do you remember yeah. seeing that? Yeah, I know. Some old guy with glasses. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a uh, there's a bunch of stuff, but yeah, it's it's just one of those things where. Uh, you know, he's just a big influence and his playing came through. And, you know, his big thing was Buddy Rich and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. he oh, yeah. or even held a Buddy Rich yeah. concert and stuff, you know, a couple times and all that. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just one of those guys, again, where if I, I met him, he was a massive influence on my drumming. Mm-hmm. And I learned every Rush album I could get my hands on back in the day. Oh, yeah. You know, he was he was basically like my virtual drum teacher, you know, <laughs> just just by learning all that shit, right? Yeah. And uh, learning Rush, but and it's funny, it's because he's a Sabian guy. I'm endorsed with Sabian too, and I I remember when we did that tour in the U.S. and uh, my Sabian rep Christian came out to our show, <clears throat> and uh, we Gojira was playing down the street. Oh, remember right. That? went down to visit the Gojira guys and just say hi and stuff. And mm-hmm. my old drum tech, Dave's drum teching for Mario. So we're saying hi. And then I saw Chris there, my saving rep. And he was coming to our show that night anyways. And I was just talking with him and he brought me a symbol and he brought me the Sabian shirt, but it's a rush shirt of oh, all the yeah. rush oh, cool. symbols and stuff. And yeah. on the back, it's a Sabian. It's basically a Neil Peart shirt. Right. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, it's fucking like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I just had lunch with him. I'm like, you no. what? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, dude, why didn't you tell me? You know, it's, it's just like, fuck. You yeah. know, it's like, ah, oh, I would have been that close. You know, and yeah. it's like, and then we went in and <clears throat> here's the interesting thing why I brought up this story. So we went into the exact same conversation that we're having now. Oh, and he's wow. like, yeah, he goes, you know what, man? He goes, I've, I've gone that way where I've introduced people before. Mm-hmm. But they got all fanboy and Neil basically was like, what the fuck is going on? Because he's a real private person. Yeah. Super nice guy. Mm-hmm. You know, and Christian says nothing but amazing things about him. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if if you get these drummers and, you know, Neil Peart was their big influence. Yeah. Uh, and they just start fanboying out and just, oh, I can't <laughs> believe I'm with you. Let's take a selfie. And blah, blah, blah. Within the first two minutes of meeting him, you know, it's... It's uncomfortable for people, right? Yeah. But, you know, Chris yeah. knows me and he knows I'm chill. You yeah. know, he's yeah. seen me around other, you know, uh, professionals, musicians and stuff. Yeah. That, you know, he'd know and I was just like, but I was kind of, you know, rubbing it in a bit and like, you son of a bitch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Inside next time. Be next time. Else, but. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no. It, it'd be cool. I thought, and uh, it was interesting though, just how he, he he told some stories, you know. And uh, I've met different guys who have met him, like Jason Bittner. There was this thing Mike Portnoy, obviously has met Neil a couple times, being a big fan. And uh, Mike's a big drummer, you know, oh, yeah. big name. And he uh, was walking around at Prague Power, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah. Yeah, he did the Dem- gong thing. That's right, with uh, yeah. Hacken. And then... Um, right, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, I saw him backstage. Mike's, Mike's a nice guy. He's a really, really nice guy. And again, a legendary drummer, right? But um, yeah, I remember, uh, you know, Mike was posting on his Facebook page uh, a picture of him with, with Neil Peart and his son Max with Neil. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, and I comment, I'm like, you son of a bitch, man. And then, <laughs> then Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall posts his picture. You know, I'm just like, oh, you guys are killing me. You know, it's just like, you know, and, and it was pretty funny, right? And you just have to, you have to post all these pictures of like the, the guy you want to meet. But mm-hmm. it's cool, man. It's like the industry's small when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once you're in it, and especially within a genre, like, prog or whatever it's not like massive like pop music or whatever yeah you know it's yeah. it's it's a pretty tight industry it's yeah. cool that's oh. the way it seemed like in the backstage of like prog power it was oh, just yeah. a bunch of 
dudes yeah. wearing black shirts hanging out in the back, and yeah. a few ladies trickling around somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, the wives of all the bands. Yeah, yeah so, and hiding in a corner somewhere. For, for, for <laughs> whoever's hearing this podcast, just so you know, the prog industry, yeah, not a lot of chicks in the back. <laughs> My wife has nothing to worry about. <laughs> and she'll be like, oh, are there chicks? I'm like, do you know what kind of music I play? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of fucking dudes. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's, and that was someone like when we came off a tour and I had some friends back home ask me what it was like and that was one of the first questions like yeah. how many times you've been hit on and did you like sleep with anybody I'm like no number one there's no time yeah. number two there's no girls yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah it's pretty well, I guess for... if you were like gay it might be good, <laughs> right because then you're uh, like I don't know I don't know what the I don't know how but... it works you know, the, the, the funny the funny thing is recently, like this last tour of Europe and last tour of the States there and stuff, in the audience, mm-hmm. way more women than what there was seven years ago when we started. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's appealing now because the music's grown too and there's more to, it's not just metal or just 11 minute epic prog yeah. tunes, you know, it's like there's Devin Wright, like I said, he's very versatile, so there's yeah. rocks, there's pop songs, like yeah. we do everything. Mm-hmm. There's a lot so, of uh, women too leading a lot of really good prog bands now too. Oh yeah, well you just know. rock bands even. Just, oh yeah, yeah. No, I think it's wicked. I love female fronted bands. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. what's that band? Um, uh, what are they called? Is it Hailstorm? Yeah, there's Hailstorm. Yeah, that's that's uh with Lizzie. Ailstorm. It's like it's an A, isn't it? No, no. I'm talking about the one that starts with H. There's an Ailstorm. Oh and then right. It's hail. Yeah, I, 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 I. And anyways, it's chick from it, and yeah. her name's Lizzie or whatever, and she's got this fucking amazing voice, mm-hmm. just kick ass too. It's rock, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And just when she adds a little bit of grit into her voice, she's powerful yeah. as shit, man. I'm oh, just yeah. like love that you know or the you look in the metal band the butcher babies mm, yeah those, those two girls fucking <laughs> out scream a lot of fucking dudes i know <laughs> you know yeah. it's like they got some pretty pretty sick voices as well right yeah but so. oh, there was that one <clears throat> band we saw we went to see at the drive-in mm-hmm. that was who we saw right yeah at the commodore yeah and, and we went to go see them we got there early um and there was this band called the butcherette yeah. And it was just stripped down dirty rock. Yeah. And it was this girl like with she the lead a, of the band yeah. and she just destroyed oh, that's cool. And it was like it, it it was I think she overshadowed like uh at the drive in who's like a very oh. crazy chaotic rock band, yeah. right? Crazy. And just her alone and her like there was no real light show, it was just mm-hmm. them kind of rocking out. Yeah. And she very totally rock, destroyed. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good. <clears throat> I can't remember her name. Yeah, I can't think of it either. Uh... Gender Bender. Terry Gender Bender. Oh. <laughs> That's original. That is. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. That's... I think that's a good place to stop. An hour. Is it an hour already? Yeah. Holy shit, man. I don't know. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, oh fun. dude right there we covered so much actually that is fucking cool yeah. it's like let me know when you you put it up because i'll share it you know yeah. it's like it'll probably be like uh sunday or monday yeah when when you put it up let me know and i'll, I'll put it on my various sites and stuff because it's a cool thing for people to listen in on you know they'll they'll want to like, hear it and there's dtp stuff in there there's you know yeah yeah it's cool yeah <laughs> sometimes it's funny when we were talking about like the USA, the difference and and how it was. I don't think I overstepped any boundaries, but I sat there talking and going, "Oh fuck! I hope I don't piss off any U.S. fans." No, no. but I mean, you know, it's, but, but it's the truth, you yeah. know. Like even for filming stuff, yeah. it's um, if I work on any documentaries in Canada, yeah, it's harder to get. Uh, regular people to do things but in yeah. the US like I get to be on TV yeah, really totally. and they'll do anything yeah, you yeah. know wow. yeah like even I took even on tour like I took the camera into Denny's on a day off mm-hmm. and the waitress is like oh are you guys filming stuff she just saw the camera and she wanted to be on camera mm. I'm sure the people at Denny's were like no 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 like her yeah. managers and stuff yeah. probably 
it's probably not. But well, yeah, I always boundaries. But she was like so adamant she wanted to be on camera. Yeah, I always worry about that shit too because you don't want to piss off like the U.S. is finally starting to take off, right? Yeah. But you'll listen to to this anyways. Fucking, if it sounds a bit too whatever, just cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last all thing all we want to do is fucking. We're piss even off this anyway. part. I'm leaving this in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Right? <laughs> Leave this part in. <laughs> yeah. All Take out those. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's that's cool, man. It's fun. You mm-hmm. should. Honestly, you should just get s- some people like, uh, you know, obviously go through all the DTP guys, you know, going to get beef at the sushi restaurant or, you know, you know, what would be cool is get beef and Keith, mm-hmm. do one with them. Just say, Hey, can we come there an hour before you open? I want to put you on our podcast. Yeah. You know, Keith would be fucking, oh, you know, <laughs> then you just, th- that one, you don't know, talk about like, so, so how did this happen between you and Brian? You know? Yeah. Mike St. John, well, fuck, you don't need any topic. You just let him talk, and that's going to be a great one. No, I mean, we did it, like, the other... When he comes back, we'll maybe do it again with him, but... Oh, you did one with him. Yeah, and it's basically just normal, because we (coughs) hang out so much that it's, like, it's just us hanging out. But it's, like, recording what our normal hangout is like. That's cool. (laughs) That's cool. And it usually turns into this. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. But, no, I'd I'd love to support it. It's cool, you're... uh, Pictures got in, huh? Oh, yeah. And then yeah, magazine. dude, yeah, you got full-on credits the whole bit. Like, that's what I told them. It's like, anything that gets used gets uh, credit. This weekend. Yeah, so you have that, man. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's good, man. It's like the morning... Nobody gets, gets printed open. anymore because magazines are dying. Yeah, I know. It's and, and that's the thing that's great, though. It's almost beneficial for photographers now because there's so much... Uh, so much social media out there. Yeah. That if you get it printed and something... Fuck, you need more photographers, like, man. It's yeah. like, because they're always looking for shit. Yeah. You know, it's like... Yeah. The thing that sucks is it is like the music industry. It's harder for photographers now because... Because everybody's doing every, this. Everyone doesn't want to pay. Yeah. You know, they, they're like... Oh, I could just do it on my phone. What's the difference? I don't know. I don't need it. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking yeah. bullshit, yeah. but whatever. I think Pat Stewart wanted to do something... Oh, with this? Like, uh, he wanted to do some photo thing. Oh, you, it for wouldn't like, surprise for, me. Cause for, like, a sonar, like, having you and this Flavio, a sonar guy? No, he's not sonar. It was someone else then. And it was, like, you three, or maybe just you and him to do a sonar yeah. shoot. Yeah, fuck no, we should, man. And then like, I ran into him at, like, Body Energy getting smoothies, and, mm-hmm. and then he reminded me of that idea. Yeah. But I haven't talked to him in a while. He's in Cabo right now. Oh, but, okay. But yeah, like, let's, uh, yeah, let's hook that up, man. Sonar loved it, right? They loved the photos and stuff, so mm. they'd be all over that. You never know, man. You keep on doing more shit like that, Sonar might hire you to do a bunch of shit for their... Yeah, that'd be wicked. Yeah, yeah. man. And, uh, oh, we... But, I mean, for me, it's motors. like, that's not the point. It's just to... No, I know. Do it, like... Yeah. I feel like it's almost like... Yay! Wasn't that fun? Ugh. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, put another one of these up next week.